You know, my favorite animal is the giraffe. Unfortunately, they're not really native to Florida. But you know, I know some place close by where I can go and see them. It's a beautiful spring day here. Cool temps, blue skies, minimal traffic. And look at this! There's not even any lines to get into Animal Kingdom! there may be no lines because everybody's already here? Well, we took a ride up and down the lanes of handicap parking and found no spots. We even checked over by the charter buses where they usually have some spots left over. And there wasn't any there. Then we noticed a cast member standing off by himself by this sign. So we went over and talked to him for a second. Okay, so according to the cast member, we're in overflow parking. So what exactly does that mean? Well, it means though... We usually park in the area circled in blue. Today they found us a primo spot on the other side of preferred parking. In Peacock 4. And with the single goal of riding the Kilimanjaro safaris, we headed through the crowds of Harambe's main streets to the entrance.
and after a mere 110 minute wait, it was our turn to load on to the safari vehicle. Not a problem. Forward or back? Hold on, I'm just trying to look where I'm going to anchor this on this. Oh, well, the front um, part's easy, the back part stinks. Yeah, the back part I'm looking at, trying to figure yeah. it out. That pole going down in front of the. That's where they mostly stick it on. Okay. Okay. Tunes on this thing. Yeah, well, the good news is we're on the last couple of weeks for this wheelchair. When I'm right in the front, there's a center post. It's probably the easiest one to do. Right here? Yep. All right. That works for me. <laughs> and then I can work around the straps. No, it's okay. This thing doesn't have a tendency to shake around too much. Well, it depends if she goes crazy out there. Well, it is partly. <laughs> around this watering hole you can get lucky and spot a black rhinoceros or two and look in the very far back back there there's a black rhinoceros now it's always pretty cool to see black rhinos being that there's less than 5,000 of those animals left in the world so look over here to your right on the riverbank it's out here sunbathing it's getting a suntan I said hippopotamus <laughs> Hippos can weigh up to 5,500 pounds and they are the most dangerous animals found in Africa. That's because they're so territorial. Hippos do not like to be messed with. Oh, whoa. Look over here to your left. You're going to find some cold blooded animals. And these are crocodiles. Crocodiles are pretty large. They can get up to 20 feet long. They can weigh up to 500 pounds. Please remain seated for me. Please remain seated on your bottom. There we go. And also the Nile Crocodile, it has some super powerful jaws. Their jaws are so powerful in fact that they will crush the bones of their prey using a force of 2,000 pounds. And this right here is the Serengeti grassland. It's just one of the many savannas. It's 
standing all across the continent of Africa. And look over there to your right, that is a large, large cow. Oh, there's a few of them over there. Those cows are Ankoli cattle. They are also known as the Watusi cattle, named after the Watusi tribe who domesticated them. And those are the only domesticated animals found here at Harambe. Those horns on the Ankoli cattle, they can get up to six feet apart from each other. And they're actually hollow on the inside. All that flows throughout them is blood. That blood will cool off throughout the day and later go throughout their bodies, cooling their bodies off. So those horns are sort of like massive air conditioning units on their heads. Oh, went over here to the left, I'm seeing some large rocks. So we find some predators. Most predators are nocturnal animals. There are a handful of daytime hunters so though. Oh, back there walking around to the left. Yep, that's a spotted hyena. See back there walking around the fence? Spotted hyenas are dominated by the female, meaning that the lowest ranking female, she will still out drink the highest ranking male. So what? Look over here to your left, there's a herd of white bearded wildebeest. And these animals know all about migration. About one and a half million of them will make their way across the savannas of Africa, traveling anywhere around 500 to 1,000 miles a year. And they're going to wherever the food or the water might be. Those animals really won't stop moving for anyone or anything, not even one of their own kind. Whenever a wildebeest is born, that calf only has about 10 to 15 minutes to get up on its feet and start running with the rest of the herd. If it can't keep up, then sadly, it will have to be left behind. It's not a very nice thing for them to do. And over here to your left, walking around, these are Patterson's elands. Patterson's elands are the largest antelopes in Africa. They stand at about six feet tall at the shoulder, and they can weigh up to 2,000 pounds. Yeah, they're pretty large. Oh, wait, let's see here. Wait, shh, shh, Hear that clicking noise? You can hardly hear it over there. It's actually that large male over there to your left. Whenever he walks, his knees click. It's actually his tendons popping every time he's walking around. And look over here to your left. That's a giraffe. Giraffes stand between 18 to 20 feet tall when they're full grown. Whenever a giraffe is born, it starts off standing right at about 6 feet tall, making them very tall babies. And that's right after they make about a 6 foot plunge to the ground. Now giraffe spots and prints are completely unique to themselves. It's just like your fingerprints, no two giraffes will ever be the same. Just like how you'll never find another human with the exact same fingerprints as you. Let's see here, now that we're a little bit closer to this Patterson Zealand, you might be able to hear him. There it goes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> pretty cool. He can turn that clicking noise on and off. So whenever he wants to do it, he'll do it. Whenever he doesn't want to do it, he'll turn it off. It's pretty cool. Over here to your right, there's some tiny little antelopes hanging out by those bushes back over there in the back. Those tiny antelopes are springbok. Springbok stand at about three feet tall. They can weigh up to 100 pounds. And even though they're tiny, they are very mighty little animals. They can jump up in the air up to six feet. They can leap forward up to 13 feet. Also, Springbok can run at the speeds of 50 miles per hour. Now, these are Maasai giraffes, and how I can tell that is by their messy and spotty patterns. There is another type of giraffe found in Africa, and that is the reticulated giraffe. Reticulated giraffe's patterns are uniform and very, very well put together. Over there to your right. Look back down the back. <laughs> oh, he's flapping his massive ears. I promise he's not about to fly away like Dumbo. He's just pulling his body off. It said that there's less than 500,000 of those gentle giants left in the world. And even though that sounds like a large number, that number is decreasing rapidly. Within the next 12 years, if poaching stays how it is, then elephants will be completely extinct. Unless we do something to change that. One way you can help out is by donating to the Disney Conservation Fund. With the Disney Conservation Fund, no donation is too large and no donation is too small. Every donation made, it is in fact matched dollar by dollar and penny by penny by Disney itself. And you can head to any of the merchandising locations found here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. You can help make a wonderful difference for not only elephants, but animals found all around the world.
And over here to your left, there is a flamboyant or a group of flamingos. These flamingos are greater flamingos. They are the largest of the flamingo species and also the lightest in coloration. They get their light pink coloration from the beta carotene that they eat, such as shrimp. Whenever a flamingo is hatched, it starts off as a gray and black fluff ball. And then after about a year to a year and a half, it'll get its light pink feathers and be matching the rest of the flamboyants. And we're going to keep making our way on into the savannah. Hopefully we can find some more animals around here. Here to your left, that is a white rhinoceros. The white rhinoceros can weigh up to 5,000 pounds. Even though it can weigh that much, it can still run up to speeds of 35 miles per hour. So you do not want to spook or startle that massive animal or give him any reason to start running like that. Now the white rhinoceros, sadly, it is also poached for its keratin horn, just like the black rhinoceros we saw earlier. And over here to your left, there's also a zebra. The zebras are in fact black with white stripes. And now you can tell that is by the coloration of their noses, which is black. Now zebras, they have kicks strong enough with their hind hooves to break the jaw of an attacking lion. So you do not want to mess with the backside of a zebra. And look over here to your left, look on top of the rocks. That's a cheetah. <laughs> Cheetahs are the fastest animals in the world. They can run up to speeds of 60 miles per hour. They'll only go that fast though for a few hundred yards, so no worries. They'll slow it right on down to the slow, near speeds of 30 to 40 miles per hour. Which is no big deal, right? 30 to 40, that's not that bad. I mean, I'd be absolutely terrified if I was being chased down by a cheetah, especially in this truck, because this truck right here only goes about eight miles per hour. Woo, yeah, we'd be in a lot of trouble. And look over here to your left, there's a cheetah walking around. <laughs> They are also poached, and they are poached for their beautiful pelts or their fur. That fur is used for useless items such as wall decor or even a rug. But the demand for cheetah fur has gotten so high, and poaching for cheetahs has become such a high epidemic that there's not that many of them left in the world. Surprisingly, they're not on the endangered species list yet, but before long they will be. And look over here to your left. Ooh, that's a big one. Uh, there's a lion. There's one over here walking around the rocks as well. The lions, they're usually inactive about 16 to 20 hours a day, usually sleeping, resting, or just lying around. They are nocturnal. They'll go out during the nighttime hours to hunt. The female shall usually be the one to hunt. While the male stays behind, he'll watch over the territory and to watch over any cubs if there are any around. The lions, they have amazing eyesight. Their eyesight's just like yours during the day. But as soon as the sun goes down and it gets dark, their eyesight will be six times better. So you want to talk about night vision goggles? They have them naturally. And over there to your right, there's some ostriches. We'll see them again in just a minute. Look over here to your left. Check out this big guy. Now this mane on this male lion it will get darker and darker as he gets older and older. Also his mane, it can weigh up to 80 pounds, which is a lot of hair. <laughs> Look at that over there. Oh. <laughs> He's like, yep, I'm done. And we're going to continue making our way around here. Let's see what other kind of animals we can find out and about. Oh, over there to your left. There they are. Those are warthogs. Warthogs are some of the largest burrowing animals found in Africa. They dig their burrows using their tusks and also using their humps. Usually they'll steal a burrow from another animal though and call it home. Ostriches. The ostrich is the largest bird in the world. Thank goodness it cannot fly. I'd be absolutely terrified if that right there was flying over my head. They can run really fast though. They can run up to speeds of 40 miles per hour. Let's look around here. 
Oh, over here to your right, there's two birds. They're laying down on the ground. These two birds over here are yellow-billed storks. And yellow-billed storks, they stand at about five feet tall when they're full grown. And those are carnivorous birds, meaning that they only eat meat. Yeah. So we're coming on up here. We can hear the singing from the locals from the village. Beautiful singing. It'll haunt you in your dreams. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna come right here. I'm gonna call to the warden real quick, just to let him know that I'm here. <laughs> All right, then I'm gonna double honk. Just to let everybody know I'm coming. And we're just gonna keep making our way on around here. See what we can find on with Jumbo. Oh, Jumbo. Yeah, so over there to your left, oh, that was a group of khaki, and a group of khaki is not a khaki, it's as a khaki, which I sometimes call them an annoyance of khaki, because, yeah. Over here to your right, that's the bumping of a truck. That's how we switch out drivers. It's pretty cool science. All right, then we're gonna keep making our way around here. This thing over here to your right, that is super cool. I have absolutely no idea what that is. <laughs> We're gonna hang out right here for just a second. And up here, we're gonna see some bridges. This is the grand finale of the tour. Bridges. Yeah, you actually went over one of these bridges to get onto this ride. You're gonna go over another one whenever you exit from the ride, unless you go to Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. At Gorilla Falls, it is a walking trail. You can take scooters, ECVs, wheelchairs, whatever you have. You can take them on that trail. You can take as much time as you want. You can take as little time as you want. Doesn't matter. You can see some pretty cool animals there that you didn't get to see here on the safari, such as neck rats, meerkats. You saw zebras. There's also zebras over there. And also there's gorillas on Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. Super fun, super exciting. What else do we have here in Africa? Oh, we have a pretty cool show here. And that show is Festival of the Lion King. Festival of the Lion King is showing every hour on the hour until 6 o'clock tonight. I do suggest getting there about 20 minutes before showtime, though. Just so that you know for sure that you'll have a spot. And you can have somewhere to sit. So we're going to hang out right here. We're going to let these trucks up ahead of us go down by us. And it's going to be pretty cool. It's going to feel sort of like you're in a parade, except these people. There's going to be faces of confusion, sadness, madness. They're not going to know what's going on because all these people think that this is their truck about to pull up. So you can just go by. We can wave to them. We can tell them, tell them, <laughs> we can tell them Jumbo. Say Jumbo to everyone. You can wave. And no worries. These people cannot get to you. They are all in their cages. They can't get over here. Yeah, they have their own personal cages, so. All right, y'all, so we should be getting that all clear. Right about now. All right, so here we go. You're gonna hear this loud squeaky noise. There it is. That's a good noise to be hearing. Hold! Alright y'all, Quaharini, have a great day. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, you too, bud. Before we head on out there, if you take a look above your head, you're going to see an animal spot. You guys can help you identify some of the animals we might find out there. We might not see all the animals over on that guy. Alright, what's that?
see how the best way to do this is. Grill. We got it. Thank you. Okay, so parking is always going to be a problem in Animal Kingdom. Crowds are always going to be a problem in Animal Kingdom, but come on! You know, I wish there was some way we could have a rating system, something that would take the experience and mount it against the pain level and tell you whether that balanced each other out, but no, there, there really isn't, because everybody's different. And as much as I love giraffes, I had the worst night's sleep that night after coming home that I've had in a long time. So you gotta take the good with the bad. So as much as I love animals in general, and giraffes in particular, it'll probably be a while before I make my way back over to the Kilimanjaro safaris. And although Emmy's a domesticated animal, she'd still like you to like, comment, and subscribe.